In Battlefield 4, you've most likely destroyed or been destroyed by vehicles. Many see it as a huge problem with the game, and some others praise BF4 for its vehicle gameplay. One thing is for sure, most players are either on one side or the other when it comes to vehicles. In this video, I want to continue the conversation started by AKAR with this video. His main points were the infantry need to either be able to counter the vehicles using some sort of anti-vehicle weapon, or hide from them in some area in the map. They also need to have some reward for players who balance servers, because vehicle stacking is definitely an issue in BF4. These are definitely super valid points, and being someone who's a filthy vehicle abuser, but also a decent infantry player, I thought I'd give my take on the situation, and some possible ways for DICE to approach it in BF6. For the sake of this video, I want to mainly talk about the BF4 vehicles. There is no argument that can be made for BF1 and BF5, those vehicles were designed really badly, and I hope BF6 takes no inspiration from them. Looking back at Battlefield 5, we had tanks with a really high velocity, high explosive shell, and you could basically sit at the edge of the map and snipe effortlessly, infantry could never kill you, and you'd just farm infinite kills. This is a really boring way to play, I don't think the tankers even enjoy it, but they do stat pad their KD pretty well, so a lot of players actually do this. When it comes to the planes, it's more of the same. The most effective way to fly is actually just to use a bomber, fly it about a kilometer over the enemy where they cannot even hit you or basically even see you. As soon as your crosshair goes over the enemies, your little bombing circle, click as fast as you can, have your kill feed entirely lit up, and you get a lot of kills. But it's not rewarding at all and it's not fun. Circling back to BF4 though, we have to understand that the game is 8 years old. That means that the player base has had a long time to get used to everything the game has to offer, and the game is just flat out sweaty. If you join a locker server these days, you'll see these cracked out 15 year olds teleporting on rails, and if you join a conquest server, you'll probably see some 8v8 player decimating the entire enemy team in a vehicle. Point is, the game has reached a point where vehicles are being played optimally by a very small percentage of top players. In Art's video, he said that he doesn't want to remove those players from the game, and that these streaks should still be obtainable if the player is either extremely skilled or is using teamwork very effectively. And when I look at BF4, I do think that for the most part, the players that are actually abusing the vehicles to this level are pretty skilled vehicle players, and regardless of what you do in BF6, a lot of them will still be successful. In saying this, I really do hope that BF6 forces these players, myself included, to learn how to play the game. I don't want people forcing their existing BF4 playstyles into the game and having it work perfectly. Ideally, BF6 provides more of an even playground, by providing new, interesting and skillful vehicle mechanics that will take even the top players some time to master. That all sounds really great and I don't know if DICE can actually manage it, but Battlefield 4 was an example of this done wrong. The game took so much of Battlefield 3 that players initially were calling it BF3.5. Yes, these mechanics were loved by the community and made BF4 a great game, but BF4 was getting farmed hard from the first week. And as much as I want to post a video like, I farmed the enemies for 350 and 0 in the new A10 Warthog in BF6, the enemies didn't like it. Um, it really wouldn't be good for the game. I really do hope that I have to learn some new stuff, and that would just make the game so much more fun in the long run. Aside from some fresh and hopefully good mechanics, I think BF6 needs a better way for players to learn and improve with the vehicles. Even 8 years into the game, arguably the biggest Battlefield content creator doesn't know the jet turning speed. I don't know the correct turning speeds and all that stuff, you know? Like, there's a way that you can do it, so you go a certain speed, you see those dials there. I think it was 300 for the perfect turning speed. But I never mastered it. I don't know what it is. Which has been around since BF3. This isn't a dig at Jack Frags, but there needs to be a better way to learn the game rather than just watching YouTube. A great first step to doing this would be to introduce AI matches which actually play similarly to the real game. Allow users to change settings such as the game mode, vehicle spawn time, map, match duration, factions and stuff like that, and you'd have a great mode. This would be fantastic, especially if you're like a jet pilot for example, you could crank up the vehicle spawn time, so you'd have an endless stream of vehicles to practice shooting. Using this, you could build some confidence against AI, and then hop into multiplayer and test your skills. Multiplayer, however, often requires a lot more thinking and understanding of how the enemy plays than just how the battlefield works in general and a great way to help this would to be introduce some sort of replay feature. Even if you had the last 5 games available to replay, and you could go through and view all the players perspectives and even free cam around, it would really help players understand what is going on and help them improve. Not only would this help new players understand vehicles and how to get into them, but it would help infantry players also understand how to play against vehicles. 
You can definitely do this without a match reporting feature, but it'd be so easy just to boot it up and then see for each map where the vehicles kind of end up on each map, see the lanes that you can often get through as infantry and just safe areas of the map, areas of the map you shouldn't cross. And as a vehicle player, you can kind of do the opposite and figure out where infantry are going to be. But in general, this would just be a really, really good feature. I mean, one of the only ways to get this kind of experience right now is to stream sniper streamer or actually just get in their game, play against them and then watch how they react to you. And that's a really good way to learn. That's actually a good way to learn how to play the game, but it is extremely scum and I don't really support that at all. So yeah, I think a uh, match recording feature, really good idea. Hopefully DICE implements it, but we can only hope. As far as actual in-game balance goes, I don't think BF4 is that bad and it could be learned from. Sure, there are some things in the game which are definitely overpowered. An example is would be thermals, but even those are actually counterable using the flares on infantry, but I think overall, thermals are undeniably broken and I do not blame you at all for having that opinion. However, just look at the specific maps where people complain the most about vehicles and you'll notice one thing in common. Every single one of those maps has left out an essential counter to whatever vehicle dominates. For example, Siege of Shanghai has nothing to counter the attack heli like an AA or a jet. Zavod doesn't have anything like an attack heli to counter the tanks, and most of the naval maps don't really have anything to answer the air vehicles like an AA. On the maps with the majority of the vehicles available though, the balance is actually really good, and some people dislike how balanced the rock paper scissors system is. Basically what I mean by this is that every vehicle has a kind of rock paper scissors vehicle that will counter it, so let's say your attack jet is a rock, well then there is a paper in the game which is the stealth jet. And a good attack jet pilot can beat a lot of vehicles, but it can never beat a good stealth jet pilot. Even a competent stealth jet pilot will kill me every single time unless I play really smart around it. And in my case, I think that's fine. I think that's okay to be able to slightly edge out a vehicle that's supposed to kill you if you play it really smart. Take tanks for example. They have two kind of rock, paper, scissors, the paper to tanks. That is going to be the attack Kelly and the attack jet. Take the attack Kelly, the counter that is the AA, and the stealth jet. I mean, there's a counter for every single vehicle and there's literally nothing left out here. That is something that people actually hate because you're versus a really good player and they'll end up switching around their vehicles constantly, just playing their entire game to counter you. And it does get really annoying as someone who just wants to play the game, but the balance is definitely there and it's been thought about heavily. So after saying all this, you guys might be asking, hey Silk, so what's the answer? You know, a vehicle's overpowered. And yeah, they're overpowered. Of course they are, it's a battlefield game, they're always overpowered. That's my serious take. They're balanced really, really well, but overpowered at the same time. That perspective might not make sense, but it's the same for Battlefield 5 planes in my opinion. The AA is super overpowered, but so are the planes. Battlefield 5 just takes the whole OP thing and just takes it to a whole new level, and DICE really messed up there. But they didn't mess up on BF4, and I really think they did almost everything right, and I actually commend their efforts here. The game just wasn't meant to be played for 8 years, and given that huge amount of time and the large skill ceilings on most vehicles, the situation definitely went way further than it should have, and the skill ceilings were actually almost reached on a lot of vehicles. You have players on almost every single one that pretty much took it as far as you could. And an example of one of those players is my friend X8 Reaps, who is probably one of the best, if not the best, Sky Heli pilot in the world. And I actually asked him on his opinion here, and I think he puts it really, really well. Do I think vehicles are up in Battlefield 4? The problem is it's very hard to give a good scale if vehicles are up in Battlefield 4 because of one problem, in my opinion, perspective, okay? Like... You gotta, you gotta judge it based on the average player base. Is the average player base godlike with vehicles? No, they're not. So are they technically godlike? The right? If they were, if they were so godlike, any player would be able to go in any vehicle and easily dominate, right? If that was true. But since they can't, I wouldn't say they're op, but they are op once you master them. So, or originally they're not op, but once you learn them and master them, oh yeah, they're fucking op. 100%. So while I look at the argument from the kind of top level where if the higher level players can make the game unbearable and make vehicles seem overpowered, then I see that as overpowered. Whereas Reaps has a different angle where he looks at it from the average, so if the average player can't use it and it's not overpowered in the hands of the average player, then it's not overpowered at all. And that's a really, really valid way of looking at it, and I think that perfectly explains why Battlefield 5 vehicles are overpowered, but in his perspective, BF4 vehicles aren't. I'd really like to hear what you guys think about in the comments, so please let me know. Do you guys think that vehicles in BF4 are overpowered, or do you think they're balanced? And what would you like to see in Battlefield 6? Anyways, with all that said, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.